Hello, my name is Blake, and in this video, we're gonna be ranking some eBay business types from worst to what I think is best. Here's the format. I have a pyramid drawn up right there. The bottom layers are the worst businesses, and the top layers are the better businesses. Now, I'm not saying, oh, if you do the bottom things, you're a moron, because I do some things on the bottom because it's fun. I sell sports cards as a hobby, it's fun. So even if you do these things, it is not a personal attack, but if you are trying to make as much money as you can, well, you're gonna wanna watch this video. On the bottom layer of the pyramid, and I know the bottom layer is the base, it's the strongest, the metaphor, eh, don't question it. On the bottom layer of the pyramid, we have people who sell clothes for under $15, people who sell garbage that doesn't have any demand, they don't check the completed sales, and people who drop ship. Are there examples of these types of businesses making money? Are there drop shippers who make good money? Are there clothing organizations who make a lot of money selling $50 clothes? Sure, look at swap.com. I'm sure you can go on YouTube and find some successful quote unquote drop shipper who says they make a million dollars a year selling uh, solar panels, I don't know. But for most people out there, you don't wanna sell cheap clothing because you're paying at least 550 to ship this, and after fees, after the buy cost, it's a very bad business model. You don't wanna drop ship because you have no quality control, and you don't wanna sell things that just like on a whim you like because for most people who are beginning, they don't have an idea of what sells and what doesn't sell. Now, I'm not saying that everything without a completed sale is a bad idea. I'm just saying that if you're a beginner and you don't know how the markets, uh, how the, what the demand is for the markets, then probably stay away from that. Use the eBay app and search by sold, it's your friend. The second tier is undercutting retail arbitrage people, anyone who sells cheap sports cards like myself, and anything under 20 bucks with free shipping. The last one, under 20 bucks with free shipping, pretty easy to explain. There's just not enough meat on the bone unless you're doing high quantity, and we'll get into that later. Now, retail arbitragers who undercut, here's the issue. I see this all the time. Let's say someone buys a blaster box of, of football cards or basketball cards for 20 bucks plus tax. Then they put it on eBay for 35 bucks free shipping. Even though in their head, oh, I'm making $15 they're really making about like $4 or less than that in some cases. So really this kind of retail arbitrage where the person panics because they either spent too much money or they think the market's going down, that is a bad business model. Personally, I'm not doing retail arbitrage on eBay unless I'm at least doubling my money in profit. On Amazon, if it's FBA, bit different story, but this is the eBay chart, I guess. So we'll talk about things in terms of what works on eBay. Why do I think sports cards are a bad niche to get into? Well, because it's just, for the most part, it's low revenue. If you're doing high-end graded cards as like an investment trader, different story. But for most people who buy cards to sell them, yes, it's very, very fun. But in terms of how much money you make per hour, you're better off doing everything else on the list. Our third tier is average sale prices between 40 and 100 bucks, which that could be anything, could be clothes, could be books, could be golf clubs, could be that kind of stuff. Uh, I talked to somebody the other day, they, they sold a, a, a car for $15,000, that they bought for $12,000. Even though they're making a very small uh, ROI, profit-wise, like percentage-wise, they're still making three grand. And so the higher you get up ASP, the more likely it is you're gonna have a sizable profit. And I'm just saying 40 to 60, because that seems to be uh, where the, the delineation between beginners and novices and people who are more uh, advanced, I guess. That's where it starts. Also in this category is bulk one-off sales if you're a one-person operation. I did this with used books. On Amazon, it's a bit better because you have FBA, so you're not really a woman operation. But if you're like me and you have a warehouse full of stuff and you're shipping it all yourself and you're photographing it all yourself, um, you really are pretty limited. And so those are the two things. Bulk one-off operations, that means like one listing per item, not, not multiple quantity stuff as a single person and ASP between like 40 and 100 bucks. Not a bad business model. You can easily make six figures doing this, but it's a lot of work and you are kind of limited. The fourth tier, I'm gonna say these are pro resellers. And although I've been reselling for a long time, I don't think I'm there, at least not on eBay. Maybe on Amazon I am, but on eBay, I'm still kind of uh, a middling hobbyist because I do things that are more for fun than for making money. 
Uh, the pro resellers are ones who never go below 100 bucks on their one-off items because, as I said earlier, they want to have more meat on the bone. They're selling things like uh, artwork or collections or tools or stuff like that where they're paying 100 bucks, selling for 300 And even though the ROI is not as good as a sports card, the profit is so much better. Uh, this is a higher, more advanced level because there's more money to get into it. It's more expensive, higher barrier to entry, but hey... That's uh, what it takes sometimes. Also in this category are bulk one-off resellers with a team, so multiple people. I did this a few years ago on Amazon. It's kind of tough, honestly, to manage people, but you see it. Uh, they have someone generally photographing, someone listing, someone doing inventory, someone sourcing. It's a regular business just on eBay. So this is like the next to the top tier. Uh, the reason I say these two are not like the absolute best because you still have some issues with scalability. And now, finally, the top tier. But while you're here, please remember, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Uh, and comment below if you think I'm wrong. If I missed some niches, which I'm sure I did, if you think that I maybe misorganized them or misplaced them, would love to hear your opinion. I really would. I figure there are two main niches that are top tier. And the first one is going to be wholesale. Wholesale is boring as shit, in my personal opinion, but there's no denying it's one of the best ways to make money. All you do is make a few listings and manage inventory, promote it a little bit maybe. Very easy to do, very boring to do, but if you're trying to make money, uh, I can't think of many ways that are better than that. And the second way, which I find more interesting but is extremely difficult to get into, and the kind of thing you have to have years of experience to build up the credibility with people, is high-end consignment. If you can position yourself to be a high-end consignment store on eBay where customers come to you with their extremely valuable stuff and you put no money down and you just list it and you take 20% or 30%, that is a great business model. You have very low overhead because you're not buying the stuff. You have customers bringing you things to sell, clients, uh, and then you make money off of that. I would say those two are the best if you want to be more creative, I'd say go the consignment route. If you just like numbers and crunching things that way, go the wholesale route. Wholesale, you can do that tomorrow if you have a credit card. Uh, and consignment takes a bit more time to build up your client base uh, and to get traffic going to your store. Hope you found this video helpful. Again, my name is Blake, and I'll see you later. still here. Good. I have something very important to say. Write this down. The letter D.